Hey again everyone, it's Eric back again uh, with my model railway. Just a quick update. Um, I bought something today from the shop that I've been waiting for for a little while now and I didn't think I'd do this sort of thing but might as well give it a go. So I thought I'd do a little review on Backman's 37 that's just come out in the Rail Operations Group or ROG livery. This is the 2020 version, new updated name and number and it is sound fitted. So I just thought we'd take a look and see if it's any good. So here it is in the box. As you can see, it's uh, brand new. Just bought it today from my local model shop, AGR, model railway store in Leighton Buzzard. If you're local, go and check it out. And he's a nice guy. Uh, the trouble is he takes all your money. <laughs> um, but I don't really want to bore you unboxing stuff, but you can see it's just the usual backroom packaging. Um, the code is 32-393A. SF for sound feed. So let's get it open. No point in going through packaging, that's boring, no one cares about that. Um, yeah, you get the usual paperwork, which I'm sure you've all seen a million times before. Ice cube packaging. Uh, you do get a little detail pack. It's got proper name plates in there. Uh, it's got a set of snow plows. Um, it has got draw bars in there, or draw hooks, whatever you want to call them. Uh, vacuum and brake pipes. Um, it's also got electric train supply jumpers, if you want to add those, as well as a blanking plate in case, for some strange reason, you don't like Soundfeed. So get the uh, packaging out of the way. Uh, take out the main piece. And there you go. Here it is in all its glory, more on the hand. Uh, as you can see, it's the new name and number, Cassopia 37800, and the ROG livery or Rail Ops Group, whatever you want to call it, same difference. Um, looks really nice actually. Paint works spot on. I cannot see any issues with that at all. I'll give you a nice sort of close up look. You can see also there's a driver in this end. It's always nice to see. Um, yeah, very nice. I'm really pleased with this. Look at the front end there. Buffers are obviously sprung on the loco of this price. Other side, same again. Really crisp. The colours are very vibrant. And this thing, I, I drive trains regularly on the main line and these come past me quite a lot. And hence me wanting one uh, and it looks spot on for what I see on the main line so I'm really happy I'm other than I might um, do a small bit of weathering add, add some grease on the buffers and some dirt and dust on the underframe and I'll probably paint the um, pickups what well, you can see there inside the bogey I'll probably just give that a little coat of black paint just to hide that um, but yeah other than that I'm really pleased so um the only thing that sort of is a bit annoying is Backman still have the same setup with their lighting where the front and rear lights are all on one function. So to turn them off, as well as the cab lights, you've still got the switches underneath, turn the tail lights off and the cab lights. Um, the cab lights are both on at once, which is a bit annoying, obviously. Uh, and tail lights, you want to be able to turn them off when you're pulling a train. And I don't particularly like having to flick a switch underneath to do that. So I'll probably take the body off, um, mess about with some of the wiring and put it on a couple of di different functions and set it up on the ESU programmer uh, when I get a chance. But for now, let's uh, chuck it on the layout and have a little look at it running and see if it runs right and how it sounds. Let's uh, get it started up and see how we get on. So you see you've got the lights there, front and rear lights. I like that they fade. It's quite nice rather than turn straight on and off. Uh, I might adjust those on the programmer so that they so there's a delay between the front lights turning off and the rears coming on. Um, and we'll go for an engine start. So if you press F1 on, off, and back on again, and it's supposed to do a long start. Yeah, like 
that sounds good. Might change the speaker though. It's a little bit quiet. I'll probably turn that up, but I want a bit more clarity, I think. So I might put some twin iPhone speakers in there. So we go to the horns. There's those two. We've also got uh, straight air, dump on or off. Little standard noises there. Um, so if we uh, get it moving, like I said, we've got drive holes, so I can play about with that as well. So you can see without a drive hold, you, it's uh, a bit delayed with the engine picking up. As if we use drive hold now. Then I'll give it the beans. <laughs> You've got the usual, uh, like I said, usual things like guard whistles, and sparks valves, that sort of stuff. Um, flange squirrel for getting moving again. But yeah, it seems to run alright. So let's uh, get a few shots on the layout. So this is going to be the real test, let's see how it does over my crossover and over a, uh, a three-way point. It's just coming around the corner now. No problem at all. So there you go, there's a quick little demonstration of Backman's new 37, Cassopia 37-800. As you can see it run really nice, that's uh, straight out of the box, it's not even run in, that's the first time I've actually run it on my layout, um, and couldn't even fault it. It ran nice and smoothly, no hesitations, which is perfect to be honest. So yeah, uh, if you enjoyed that, then uh, let us know in the comments if you'd want to see more of that sort of stuff. If not, fair enough, but uh, I just thought I'd try something new. So there you go, there's a quick little review of Backman's 37.